I can tell you that the Mercedes G-Wagen or Galande Wagen is 45 years old. Why? Because it's exactly the same age as me. It was born in 1979, along with a couple of other iconic vehicles, one of which is the Mercedes actually, the S-Class W126, which is the coolest S-Class. First car with crumple zones, I think, ABS, traction control, but 2018, they completely revamped the old G-Wagen, called the G-Class officially. And they haven't really changed it until now, until 2024. And in this video, I'm going to walk you around this, the new G63 AMG, but also the other models of G-Class, which are actually more my cup of tea, the non-AMG ones. There's a diesel one and there's an inline six G500. And then when you have a look at all that, you can decide which one you would rather buy. Remember now, these are one of the most expensive cars you can buy in the Mercedes range. And they're all still totally hand-built here in Austria. I'm Johnny Smith, you're watching The Late Break Show, and this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tyre retailer. So Viola, I'd like you to talk me through the visual differences with the G63. This is the 63, isn't it? So this is the, yes. the top line flagship car. It looks, I know we just had a conversation inside to say that the main focus was for it to not look very different at all from the previous car, but there are some differences. Yeah, for sure. We brought in some differences. What is really important to us is the difference we actually brought in the new, in the newly designed front bumper. Here we now have uh, three vertical fins in yep. front of the air intakes on both sides. Okay. Okay. So this part is different. And then I'm trying to think if I can see, are the headlights any different? No. Nope. No. We kept them same too. This is the wing top. This is the same? Yes. Right. Okay. All yeah. the same. But what we also get in the exterior is now we have the, um, you might don't see it with the, the light uh, conditions here, but we have the AMG crest in the outer mirror projection. Ah, uh, somewhere in here. Yes. So yeah. now you here get the AMG crest. So once you come closer to your car, you are directly uh, welcomed by the AMG crest. Yeah. You were saying about this particular version having the, the dark, the matte black running boards. And always with the mud black running board, you get the AMG specific exhaust system in black as well. So that's black as well. Okay. Yes. Now let's talk suspension, because this is a really important part, which is, I tried to write, make some notes earlier, but it's, uh, I, uh, I found it, there was a lot of detail. So you got, is it two different packages of suspension on the G63? Exactly. With okay. our new optional AMG Active Flight Control suspension, the G63 gets a much better on-road performance as well as off-road performance. Okay. And this is why we introduced the AMG Performance Package and, as you see here, the AMG Off-Road Package Pro. Okay, so let's talk about the Off-Road Package Pro to start with. The main differences with that are what? With the AMG Off-Road Package Pro? Yeah. So in both packages, you get the AMG Active Ride Control Suspension, okay. but for the off-road version, it's a bit more adapted to off-road uh, driving. Yeah. And yep. further to that, you get the uh, um, the roof luggage rack. Okay. You get the uh, off-road wheels and an all-terrain tire. A general grabber. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you also get two new off-road driving modes, actually. AMG Traction Pro and AMG Active Balance Control. AMG Traction Pro is giving the G63 traction on almost any surface, yeah. or actually on any surface. You yeah. really don't have any obstacles anymore going off-road. <laughs> and with AMG Active Balance Control, you can adjust individually the roll stiffness of the car. Okay. So, meaning, for example, our driving program trail is our dynamic uh, off-road driving program. Yeah. So you can set the roll stiffness on on really high uh, for the car if you want to go like more. Um, if you do not want to bend in anymore oh, in the curves. Yes. So yeah. you have a high roll stiffness, giving uh, setting the AMG Active Balance Control on high. Yeah. And once you want to get more uh, agility, you can put it on low. Yeah. And so you you have more agility on the car. Okay. And then the what was the other one? Uh, the AMG Performance Package. Yes. Which the that AMG, one has, I think. It 
actually doesn't have the AMG um, performance package, okay. but it has AMG Active Flight Control suspension since you can also get it as a single option. Okay. But for the AMG performance package, you have now first time the race start function for G63. Race start? Yes. Okay, so you've got launch control. <laughs> yes, exactly, launch control. Right. We, for us, it's race start, yes, right, okay. but it's launch control actually. Yeah, uh, and you have the... You were telling me, 4.3 seconds to 62? And yeah. that's uh, with that launch control function? Yeah, you have it with the AMG performance package, you have the acceleration of 4.3. Right. And with the normal new G63, it's 4.4. Right, okay, okay. So it shaves a little bit off that. Any differences at the rear from yes. the previous version? Design-wise, actually not. But with the AMG Off-Road Package Pro, you can on top select the professional spare wheel holder. Professional. Okay, so this is because normally it's in a like a colour coded box. Yes, exactly. Dimensions wise, the body is the same as the previous car. The body, it's not. It's not any longer. It, no, no, no. No. So, so the wheelbase is the same. same. The exact measures yeah. I do not have by heart, but they only changed maybe a little bit due to the new new design. But of the, of the bumper might be a yes. millimeter or two yes, different. Yes, but other to that, no. Wow. So you've gone to a huge amount of effort to not change it much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so you always keep the, the Chia um, iconic Yeah. and want to keep them the same. Yeah, yeah. Is your best-selling car model for the G-Class the, the AMG still worldwide? What do you think? <laughs> I think so. You think so? Well, I think you, you see more AMGs than non-AMGs. You certainly do in the UK, I'm sure. I can't, uh, yeah. unfortunately, I can't um, yeah, tell you in detail. It's almost like the rarer one is the non-AMG one. The cheaper one is the rarer one. I think it always depends on where you are. Yeah. But uh, I, yeah, I can't tell you the, the numbers for Okay. Sure. <laughs> so there we go. That's the visual changes and I guess the suspension changes for the, the G63 AMG, which is still the flagship version of this car. Do you know if we're going to get a 6x6 type thing or a... 4x4 four four squared version, are they coming? Nothing what we talk about. Okay. Yeah. So maybe. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> maybe. Still 4 litre twin turbo V8. Goodness me. But the biggest difference, am I right in thinking, it's up on power because of electrification. Exactly. We now brought in an ISG integrated starter generator, giving the G63 additional boost and also better efficiency. Yeah. Speaking in numbers, we have now 585 horsepowers. Yeah. But additional 20 horsepowers, thanks uh, by the AMG, uh, the ISG. Yeah. And we have a better torque. So we have 850 plus additional 200 newtons. 850 newtons new plus 200. 200. Wow. Yes. Okay. So that's, so that's a 48 volt system. And actually all of the, the new G Wagons are mild hybrids, apart from, of course, the, the full EV. And talking of the full EV, we won't be featuring that in this video because there's an embargo for that car in about three weeks. Subscribe to the Late Break Show if you haven't already subscribed because I've, I'm doing a walk around of the electric G uh, ASAP. Uh, and you'll see it as soon as it's allowed to be um, lifted from the embargo. So under here, I'm, I'm trying to remember what the 2018 car looked like, but it's the same block, it's the same twin turbo in the hot V setup. Yes, exactly. We have our newest generation of our uh, engine, of yeah. our V8 uh, bi-turbo engine in that car. And um, from the outside, you still see one man, one engine badge one handcrafted man. in a Faltobach. <laughs> one man, one engine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a hell of an anti-roll bar. I didn't notice that before. That's incredible. And of course you can see all the control systems on the top of the suspension. So you're talking about suspension is like one of the biggest changes for this car. Exactly. Our AMG Active Flight Control suspension is giving the G63 a much better on-road uh, yep. performance thanks to the better uh, to the higher road stabilization stiffness. Yep. But also since it's a fully hydraulic system we have a better off-road performance. It's really lifting the off-road performance of the G63 to the next level, as um, the G63 can be interlocked completely. So it can either go really, really stiff and kind of lower for road, 
for, for off road. Yeah, or for gravel of... roads, what we like mm. really like to do in the driving program trail to mm. go like fast on yeah. gravel roads. So you have, you have a high road stiffness. Yeah. But you're, once you go more in rougher off road areas, you want to have a really low roll stiffness so yeah. that you get the best traction on the car. So it's all well and good walking around a parked car and expressing what we feel about it and all the new facts about the G, but to remind you, to refresh ourselves of what it's capable of, we're actually going to take the outgoing car for a drive at the off-road experience centre here. So basically this is where they test and they show customers what the G can do. That, um, that sound of the central locking is unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> where, where's, the, where's the lock? Could you unlock it and relock it? You have it over here. Is it over there? Where is it? Oh, there. Ah. Listen to this. Honestly, it sounds like some piece of military <laughs> like, ammunition. Completely right. Then, Johnny, we're going over here. The warming up stations, yes. Okay. And here, middle differential is on, normal drive mode. We're driving very slowly with constant throttle up to the middle. Very slowly, constant throttle. Okay, so what, why? What, I mean, what? I suddenly need my sun visor because I can't actually. <laughs> Very good. Then you can stop here for a second, you Johnny. Want to stop. Yes, easy job for the G wagon. Okay. Because now we will also train the scenario if we're driving up somewhere, having spinning tires on the car not moving forward anymore yeah. worst case would be we're sliding back yeah. and staying on the brakes because we have no abs that means the tires are blockading and we cannot steer the car yeah therefore we have a simple solution the safety retreat reverse gear in that's it and directly releasing the brakes completely okay oh it's awful oh, just <laughs> letting it go, that's awful. i wanted to hear something different it's oh, incredible it's astonishing <laughs> Well, you're so relaxed, so I know that it's not going to be, you know, a terrible result. But at the same time, it's disconcerting. Yeah. Having to put your sun visor down because you're facing the sky. I mean, that was that 54% it was reading out then? That's it. Should be around 55% over here. Okay, so we're going to go. Again? Normal. Again. Now we're going up to the top. That was just for getting a feeling for the car, getting comfortable with the car, and yeah. seeing how good it works. And also having the exercise for the safety retreat. I've always enjoyed seeing the wing top indicators. It's always giving you a feeling yeah, where yeah. your tires are. That is amazing. That Perfect is amazing. job also from your side. Then we're going straight. Okay. And now it is the same thing. Do I just coast down or so you don't it. need to touch the brakes? That's it. Oh, okay. Only the engine brake is working. Sure. Again the profit? Yeah of course. Alright, okay. Just oh. Let it roll. Right. <laughs> Bloody hell, that was really steep. Was yeah, really it's 39 degrees. Second one, see, you can, all. You can feel it. It's starting to like lock in like that. That's oh, it. Yeah. And then I would say, slowly driving it up. Just slowly. As slow as you can. As slow as I can. That's it. Seriously. Okay, so this is concrete, isn't it? That's concrete, 80%. We're having the off-road tires on the car. Very good driving. Okay. Very good driving. Yeah, look at that. My word. That, um, that feels over-center now <laughs> to me. you yeah, feeling you not have so Differential schwer active ABS under ESP nicht. Schöckel Mountain, this is the mountain behind Graz, the test track of the G Wagon, yeah. is really similar to what we are driving now. And on these circumstances, the G Wagon has to drive 3000 kilometers of testing program. And when the car is completely in perfect shape, shape after that, mm -hmm. then it gets to zero production. And now you will really feel what the G Wagon has to do there. First lock, first gear, a so little bit on the brakes. A bit on the brakes. Right. That's it. I want to do the camera. Going, okay. okay, so very rocky. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, you got your handle there. It's <laughs> good. So, right, so it's a, I, was, I, I believe that mountain's like almost the same height as Everest. I didn't realize that. <laughs> no, in this case, it's not so high as the Everest, but really challenging roads. Not just imagine doing that 3,000 kilometers. As a car, as a driver. 
but that's what the G-Class oh, stands for. That's amazing. So what tyres are we on it in this? Are we on the off-road specific tyres? On the specific off-road tyres, yeah. the Falcon Wild Peak 83 tyres with strong sides of course, so you can like give them a little bit more, yeah. I would say power. I was having a, a little read on the plane last night, cause trying to remind myself of how much G Vargans are in the UK. Right now in the UK, the entry level G Vargan is how much? It's £131,500 for the G400D. The G63 base model is 175 grand. The carbon edition is 181 grand and the Magno edition is 193 grand. So they are an exceptionally expensive handmade steel car. They're all made, all g wagons in the world are made here in Austria. By the way, what does g wagon stand for? It stands for Galande Wagen, which I think means sort of overland or all-terrain vehicle. And the, the roots of the g wagon actually come from Mercedes' original off-roader, the Unimog. This is like a downsized Unimog. The Unimog was born in the 50s, but of course this came out, as you know from the intro, in 79. But it wasn't until it was 10 years old it started to get a little bit jingle jangle and less utilitarian. In 89, that's when they started to make it a little bit more butch and add in this luxury. And it's gone very, very luxurious over the years, as you know. I mean, this is V12 by turbo, bonkers madness. And I don't entirely like it, when it's all gone too shiny and too Beverly Hills. I personally like it when it's played down with non-body coloured bumpers and just a little bit more kind of honest and authentic. I mean, look behind you, Matty, look, bloody hell. This is the, the, the Laundelette version, isn't it? The proper Drake, Drake's back. And this is the four by four squared, yeah. So this is seven foot four, I think, high the G, the 4x4 squared. So this sort of thing and that sort of thing, the 6x6, is obviously for a certain kind of market, you know, Arab Emirates, uh, very, very high money, high ridiculousness. But actually, for me, this is, this is the more enjoyable sort of thing around here. Just think it's more honest. Just think it's more authentic. And that's why I'm most interested in what I'm about to see in a minute, the G500. Inline 6 non-AMG, don't need any carbon nonsense, keeping it real. I'm really interested to see what that car's like. By the way, if you're watching this video and you want to see the electric g wagon which is not actually called the electric g wagon it's got a really catchy name, which is why I have to look it up, because it's the G580 with EQ technology. If you're expecting to see that in this video, you won't see it because there's a different embargo for that. You'll see it in about three weeks time and I will be videoing it and it will go out on this channel. So subscribe if you haven't already subscribed because you'll get it the minute it's allowed to be watched by Mercedes-Benz. So whilst the G63 AMG is the King G, if you like, the best seller, actually, the best selling G wagon is the AMG. The OG to me is the non-AMG G. Are you, uh, are you sticking with me? And this particular one is the other new piston G class. So the G63 AMG, and then you've got this, the G500, which is a petrol inline six. And then you've got the diesel, the 450D, which is the entry level car, which is again, I think a straight six. And I wanted to look around this because this is the kind of the G which is a little bit purer and less sporty than the, the, the other AMG. And also this is available for the first time in the UK. We haven't had the G500 before. And it used to be a V8. Now, as I said, it's downsized to a straight six, but with more power than the outgoing V8. So we haven't got a bare, bare bone spec one to, to look at. So in bare bone spec, you can order it with black, regular black bumpers, black arches, and none of your shiny bits. 
but this particular one is AMG line. It does have a different grille from the other car. It's got a four louver rather than a three. It's got these kind of like, not quite overriders, but nearly overriders that are in brushed aluminium. You can get them in body color. It's got a relocated camera down here on the front end. And it's also got this kind of like these Quartic design on the side pods and in there for the grills. I don't like that design at all because it reminds me of a Ford Fusion that old people usually drive, but that's just me. Move up to here. This is all regular stuff, obviously Merc badge rather than the AMG badge that you saw on the G63 earlier. This has AMG line wheels. This is actually on 20s, 275 5020 tires, road tires, but you can order this from 18 inch wheels. So if you want more off-roady tires, you go for the 18s or the 19s. And if you want AMG rims, they go from 20s all the way up to 22. So loads of wheel and tire options. And when it comes to needing tires for your car, be it an SUV, be it not an SUV, be it electric car or not an electric car, go to blackcircles.com. Head to the Black Circles website, enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode, and then you'll find the most suitable tires for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tyres from real customers to help you choose the best tyres for your car. And with the Black Circle's click and fit service with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. So you can see this has got the, uh, the chrome side step to complement the chromey bits on the front there. But one of the biggest pieces of news of the new G is the fact that it has keyless entry, which has been around for ages on other cars, but not a G-Wagon. You've got the key in your hand, you put your hand into here, or maybe you don't. Ah, there we go. That locks it by just pressing my finger on there, put my hand down, in, unlocks. And then you've got the bank vault door, as we all know and love. Move around to the back, and this has got the hard spare wheel you saw on the G63 AMG outside that I looked at that has the off-road style holder with an open tyre. This is the fully enclosed body colour one that most people tend to go for. Oh, and while I'm here at the back actually, there's some other changes down here. The rear camera has been relocated lower down and it used to be concealed and only come out when you select reverse from that nine speed gearbox. But now the camera is permanently out, but the washer pops out and washes the face of the camera if it thinks it needs it. Nice bit of tow bar action. Obviously it can tow three and a half tons. You'd be ashamed if it couldn't. So that's gonna be a popular option and it bloody well should be. You've got these little grip tape tops here for the steps on top of the bumper and then inside, side opener, flush entry point. This has got the optional cherry wood, I think it is, which is the manufacturer individualization program, which basically means you can choose loads of different fabrics, any kind of color that you want, because this car is handmade to order, so therefore you can kind of go for your life on it. Big old boot that. I'll put the capacity on screen. I'm always interested in what goes on under the bonnet. That noise here is just a little, little charger because it's in the studio switched on all the time, so ignore that. Straight six, what is it? 2999. Uh, CC 444 horse 449 horsepower sorry at 6100 rpm 560 newton meters of torque this car weighs under two and a half tons 2485 kilos which is less than the diesel and a 715 kilo payload nine speed automatic gearbox because of course you can't buy a manual g wagon anymore because it's not the 80s anymore suspension wise it's still got independent front suspension double wishbones but it has that adaptive control, which we talked about with the AMG, which is apparently revolutionizing the way in which this car drives. It might look like a hangover from the 70s, but it's supposed to drive that much better. And to be honest, the 2018 model drove so much better than the previous one. Um, this promises even more. So you can adapt it so that it can be soft, it can be hard, just like supercar damping technology that we saw a decade or so ago. That's on this as standard, I think. Now, we are absolutely drenched in luxury in, in G-Bargains. Now, it, it, there isn't really a base model as such because they're all quite high spec. This one's the manufacture spec, so this has stitched leather on the handles and stuff like that. And you can see, this is what they're all like now, AMG or otherwise, this full width um, 
touchscreen kind of EQ style dash. And then you've got the off-road cockpit in the middle here, which is where your locking diffs come into play. It's actually quite, quite subtle. You've got a touchscreen pad here, which is nice and flush now with your other infotainment buttons and a, a nice original volume control. So there's a lot of actual buttons rather than stuff in the touchscreen. Two cup holders that are heated and cooled in case you want to keep your drink hot or cold, of course. And in due course, this armrest and that armrest will also be heated as well as the seats. Oh, when I pop the bonnet, of course, um, I forgot to say that all g wagons are electrified now. So this has a 48 volt mild hybrid system. So does the G63 AMG and so does the 450 diesel. So they've all got a bit of that. And that's for economy, really, and a little bit of extra torque with the electric motor. So despite the fact that the G-Wagon has been used by 63 armies and NATO still want to make sure they can buy them until 2025 or something, and they started life as a kind of uh, military vehicle, things have got much posher. This is no different really inside in terms of space because the body shell hasn't really changed since the 2018 car and that body shell was a big change prior to 2018. So it's still a five seat. All G-Wagons are five seater. Yeah, and they've all got that massive boot. And this is a new different entertainment system. This is removable, these can unclip. You can now send information from the back to the front, so I guess if you want to be chauffeur driven, that would beg the question to me, why would you want to be chauffeur driven in a G-Wagen? Because although they're quite cool, they're not actually as spacious inside as you think they are. Um, two HDMIs and two USB-Cs down there, and obviously individual climate control and stuff like that with real physical buttons. But I do like the fact that the seats are still dug right out where your knees are, because they maximise, if you look at that kind of swan neck shape, they really maximise the room for people in the back here, which is good. Oh, it's got, let me get this right, I think it's got 18 speaker. Yes, 18 speaker Burmester audio system, complete with ceiling speakers there and at the front. So the audio in this thing kicks some audio arse. I'm fascinated by the G. I mean, it might be because we're exactly the same age. We've got a bit of a thing going on. But I'm most fascinated by the G-Wagons that are not the AMGs, because I feel like it's gone too silly with performance and too silly with the gangster shit. And actually, I prefer the non-AMG versions, like this, for example, like the 500 and like the entry-level diesel. But they're all extremely expensive. Right now in the UK, the cheapest G-Wagon is 132 grand. So it's going to be at least that when it goes on sale. But you're going to have the choice of this, the diesel, the AMG, and then the electric one, a video of which is coming in a matter of a few weeks to the late break show. Question is, what do you think? My personal opinion is I would like a G-Wagon with no options on it at all. I would like it as basic as possible. Ideally, I'd like it on steel wheels or even like alloy wheels that look like steels with non-body color bumpers. And I think it would look very cool in a kind of a forest green, mesh over the headlights, bare bones farmer spec. I'm more Bavarian kind of like farmer than I am Beverly Hills socialite, but I think you know that. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Maybe you want to join our Patreon brigade who get to watch videos early and they get a weekly blog from yours truly.